The images were like something out of a movie. A semi-truck dangling, I mean, it looks like a movie, um, over the Ohio River with the driver trapped inside, a daring rescue by a lone firefighter. It happened earlier this month in Louisville, Kentucky. What you didn't see were the dozens of first responders working as a team to make that rescue possible. The way I see it, everybody here is a rad human. are here today. First is Sergeant Joe Barrow, who expertly maneuvered the truck and air ladder into place. Next to him is Captain Michael Wren, who led the rescue operations on both the bridge as well as the river below. And finally, firefighter Bryce Carden, who lowered himself to the truck and pulled the driver to safety. My gosh, welcome to the show. It literally is the movie. So what, uh, Michael, I'll start with you. Like, what was your initial reaction to the call? Uh, so we get the call, and it's normally this. We go up there, and we there may be wrecks on the bridge before, and maybe just a bumper or a, a wheel over the edge, and it's not anything this dramatic. Um, we looked up at it from the river below and saw you've got a truck hanging 20 feet out, 20 feet down, yeah. 75 feet over the water. The river is in flood stages, and it, they've got the gates wide open. It is flying. It's moving. And there is three inches of metal hanging on the back of this truck that's holding it there. So we're all looking around, what is gonna hold this thing there? What, what's going on? That, that three inches of metal was a huge concern for us. We're, we're kind of spitballing with each other. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna secure this thing? Uh, and we made the decision to not because of the time was of the essence. There was no, we didn't have time to go wrapping chains or doing anything. And if we touched that thing, that three inches of metal absolutely could have, we could have lost her in the river. Yeah. I don't know how it's still on the, like, if I survive that, I am meant to do great things. <laughs> like, that, <laughs> like, that's an incredible position that the truck is in that, and to not completely go over. So could you see the driver, Joe? Yeah, so my company's one of the first on the scene, and uh, you quickly assess the situation. So I peeked over the edge. The lady was as calm as could be. She was leaning forward, being held by her, her seatbelt, and she was looking back saying, hey, can you help me? Come get me. Uh, and we had one person, uh, delegated to just keep her calm, let her know we're coming, give us some time. Uh, we quickly get into position because we know we're gonna attempt some, some type of rescue. Uh, also, uh, I got my captain, Chad Rogers, who's given me verbal cues of how to get this ladder out of the truck bed, right? Mm -hmm. I had to watch the sides, the top, I had yeah. to be smooth. And you're also trying to be quick. because Threading you, yeah. the needle. Yeah. Threading For the sure. needle. Yeah. Trying to, to get them in the right position without damaging anything or moving that truck that's leaning down. That's a different kind of mental clarity that you possess. Like to be that calm <laughs> yeah. in that environment and to just focus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Bryce, ex explain your role in the rescue. Cause it's So I'm a, I'm a, a rescue stuntman. firefighter <laughs> and uh, I'm trained in ropes. Um, as I'm coming out with my harness, my helmet, my gloves on, get my mind right for that we're gonna make a rescue. I had no doubt. Um, but whenever I'm coming up, you had uh, Beth Burke and other firefighters, Beth Burkhead and Jimmy Nart, they already had ropes out, setting up a system, uh, which we used what's called a mirrored system. So a lot of people think that we have a winch, you know, that drops me down and brings me back up. Mm -hmm. This is sheer manpower. Hands um, on the ropes. Hands on the ropes um, that are clipped into me. I'm going, you know, getting ready to go over the edge. He's controlling the ladder. Uh, and his movements are, are so Is this so like crucial. a budget issue? Can we not <laughs> no. afford one that, like, like no. so, can I send some money tools. your yeah, way? Well, yeah, I was yeah. like. Yeah, we have fancy tools, but we've always got it done with what we have, so we just yeah. continue to do that. It feels but, like you're more in control of the situation? Yes, okay. yes very so. Yeah, so, okay. and then we ran, the, we ran the ropes up to the ladder that he was controlling. At that time, he lifted me up, and then we proceeded with the rescue, which we'll get into. But, yeah, it was oh running like a well-oiled machine. I mean, I just give so much credit to Louisville Fire Department and the team. Entire work. team. The yeah. team that I've seen on scene was just, you know, it was flawless, and we got the we got the job done. So. All of you, everybody on your entire team, like what y'all do every day. Yeah. 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 So, Michael, this is more dangerous than people realized, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we got there... Uh, Major Chris Verdi, he goes and gives us this size up and he's telling us what's going on and what he sees. We see it from below, looking at it from the water because we've got, we've got Sergeant Bailey and Sergeant Williams inside the boat. We have divers ready to go and swift water guys ready to go uh, just in case something happened. Uh, but with Bryce out there over that edge and hanging from a ladder, hanging, we train for a rope rescue and we train for ladder type rescues, but we don't very rarely put the two together. So uh, that day, you know, I put my hand on Bryce's shoulder and I was like, look, we're getting ready to do something that we've never done before. We've never done it in this way. 
And then it hit me. I was like, I just asked one of my brothers that I, I live one third of my life with mm -hmm. and I, to put his life on the line. And he looked right back at me and he said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, look, I trust you. I trust what you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he said, let's do it. And he yeah. was more than ready. Yeah. And, and I, had, I had full trust in him. And uh, I got a picture of my 18th month old daughter that I have my watch. And I was like, the last thing I, looking back now, it's all kind of a blur. But that's one of the things I remember is seeing yeah. her before I went. So oh, it was my good. gosh. Yeah. Okay. So, Bryce, what happened when you got to the car, the driver? So, as we were talking about, uh, Sergeant Burrow and everybody who had me on the top side, it was just complete trust, but how smooth it was to drop me down, because I'm, you know, it's a, the truck is over the side, so I don't want to put any weight on this truck. Mm -hmm. um, so, for him to drop me right on the window, I was able to put my foot on the, on the mirror, kind of, as you can see, and help support myself without putting a lot of weight on it, you know? Mm -hmm. And once I reached her, the first thing I said is, I got you. And she kept saying, I, thank God, thank God, you know? And I said, you know, I'm here, but here's what I need you to do. And I, I contribute so much success of the rescue to, to how calm she was. She was a military vet, so she was able to keep her composure. And we completed the rescue together, you know? Oh. You can see she grabbed her on my neck and uh, I was able to pull her out. So it was good. Um, so Bryce, Bryce, something else happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, With her, yeah. So um, as we're going up, you know, at this point in time, uh, they have complete control of us. We're out of the truck, and I just said, do you pray? And she said, uh, yes. I said, well, let's just pray out loud together. And that hits home for me. I know you were telling me a story just a minute ago, and this mm -hmm. uh, really touches home with you, too. Um, Ten years ago, my buddy and I uh, from Pikeville, Kentucky, his name's Tyler Williams, um, we were in a side-by-side -side accident, blowing just out blowing some steam off on a cold December day, and uh, we actually rolled the razor uh, the side by side and, yeah. um, and, you know, we're sitting on this cold, hard ground, you know, injured. And, uh, I just said, you, I, I kept on apologizing, man, I love you. You know, you're going to be all right. That kind of thing. And he was like, let's just pray out loud. So yeah. we sat there and we prayed out loud. We both were, uh, stat flighted out. And that was the last time I seen him. He ended up dying two days later. Oh. So, uh, so yeah. And he was a, one of my best friends. So, oh my um, God. but yeah, so this, this rescue hits home for me because I was able to 10 years later had him with me and, Pray out loud, you know. Yeah. So it was good. I'm so sorry that that happened sure. to your buddy. Yes, ma'am. Ah. Well, Joe, um, what happened when they came back? So I was telling you earlier, once we put Bryce over the edge of the bridge, I, I couldn't see him at all. I didn't know when he made it to the truck. I didn't know when he had the patient. This was all relayed information from my captain. Yeah. Um, once we start picking them back up and we bring them over the bridge, yeah. as soon as I, I lay them down on the sidewalk, the patient lets out the biggest belt. Like she cries, oh. she is hysterical. Yeah. And I, I, I believe- She's holding it in the she, whole time. She was yeah. holding it in and she just lets it all out. Yeah. And I think some of the firefighters did too because they started clapping. It Absolutely. was like a big sense of relief. This is why I signed up for the fire department. Yeah. You know, like it was so great. Yeah. It's not like you're not watching a movie, it's real life. That's, it's incredible. Michael, what should people take away from this story? Uh, the the brotherhood and sisterhood that we have uh, is absolutely amazing. I mean, there were there were so many people on scene. We couldn't name all their names. You know, Captain Andy Hogan mm -hmm. right there with me helping us out. It, there's just so much that I hope that people really see that we are willing to risk our lives. And uh, you know, we make rescues in a house fire from time to time. Maybe swift water rescues in the river, and people don't generally see them. And this is something that puts that on a stage. Uh, in such a positive light. Mm -hmm. uh, we, Joe and I came in drill school together nine years ago wearing red jerseys, yep. and it is a true brotherhood. It's a, it's a brother and sister that I imagine like so much trust goes into as well, because you're literally putting your life on the line with Absolutely. other people the having trust, your lives the in their hands. The training that we do every yeah. single day, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it, sh it shows on something like that. You know, yeah. I, and I mentioned yeah. that we've never done this before. We've done certain parts of it in certain ways, and we practice that every day. Yeah. We just happen to put it together and perform what we would say flawlessly that day, and it's, yeah. it's amazing. Oh, it's incredible. Well, we received this message actually from the governor of Kentucky, Andy Bashir. so let's take a look. Hey everybody, it's Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir. I couldn't let three of Louisville's bravest firefighters be on the Kelly Clarkson Show without coming on to say thank you. To Bryce Carden, Captain Michael Wren, and Sergeant Joe Barrow, you all are incredible. You are American heroes. And there is an individual who got to go home to her family because of your work. And y'all have done something that not even I've been able to do. You scored an invite to the Kelly Clarkson Show. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, it's, I know that you do these kind of
and I've read, maybe not the specific one, but you, you, this is your life, and you're always putting your life on the line for us. So thank you so much for your service yeah. and your entire team out there. Yeah. Thank you to Sergeant Joe Barrow, Captain Michael Wren, and Firefighter Bryce Carden, and all the first responders that day. We also want to thank our friends at WDRB News for sharing their footage with us. We will be right back with what I'm liking.